Quiz Recipe Time. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're technically going to be testing two different glaze recipes. This recipe is John Britt's Cone 56 Copper Oxidation Red. The reason that I'm saying we're testing two different recipes is because I found two different recipes on John Britt's social medias. One of them was inside of a glaze recipe book where John Britt put one of his oxidation copper reds. That's essentially going to be silicone carbide and copper carbonate. The second glaze that we're testing is a little bit close to the original recipe, but with a few minor changes. This second recipe of his that I found on Instagram has red iron oxide and a yellow mason stain inside of it. But seeing as how once we mix the base recipe, we can't really take some of those chemicals out, we're essentially going to be making the base recipe that we found inside of the glaze recipe book, testing that, and then adding red iron oxide and yellow mason stain to that equation. Now usually inside of an oxidation kiln, you would get green from copper carbonate or copper oxide. There's tons of oxygen inside the atmosphere of your kiln to where it acts fairly normal. And this green copper stuff here will essentially stay green. If you put this same copper inside of a recipe and put it inside of a reduction kiln with reduced oxygen, you'll get red sometimes. And that is the magic of copper carbonate. Uh, Dante, you're not supposed to be able to get reds in oxidation unless they're mason stains. I would know. I've been taking ceramic classes for quite some time. Shut up, noob. You don't know about the secret chemical. But when you introduce the chemical silicone carbide to it, sometimes it'll combine with the oxygen and make little tiny localized carbon. Look, I know it's a lot more complicated than that, but I don't have time to explain a 30 minute explanation video on reduction versus oxidation kilns right now. Don't you just want the recipe? Yeah, I know you do. Now for anyone who's never heard of silicone carbide or you wanna know what it does in depth as we're not going over it in this video, I will leave a digital fire link down below. It should tell you all you need to know about silicone carbide and how to use it. And for anyone who just came to this video looking for a glaze recipe and you wanted to get out and you're tired of me talking already, you should have read the description below, you illiterate. Silicone carbide is a magical, magical chemical. It can turn things like copper from green to red, even in oxidation kilns. You can create crater and lava glazes, and you can even create blister glazes on purpose. I mean, most people don't want this to happen to their glazes, but some, some weird people out there do. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna mix up 300 grams of a batch, we're going to test it by itself on a couple different test aisles over there, and then we're gonna add this mason stain in, and we're gonna see how it acts differently with the added mason stain. If it turns a little more red with this mason stain, then it looks like we're using the mason stain from now on. But if it turns a really nice, dark, rich red without this mason stain, well, we can just X this out of the entire equation. The actual mason stain on the recipe calls for a canary yellow mason stain, but I'm using per part prosodium percep perstrum specto patronum. I'm using yellow 6450. And of course, as usual with this channel, whenever we test out glaze recipes, we will be having test aisles in the form of a brown, a bee mixed with grog, and a porcelain test aisle. We will also be testing this glaze out with some real products because I don't think you can tell what a glaze can really do until you put it on an actual product. These test aisles kind of aren't enough for me to tell the entire activity of the glaze. And as usual, I'll be mixing them with some of the more popular glazes that I usually use, such as Floating Blue and Lumos, just to see if they play along with my glazes and the gambit that I usually use. But Dante, won't you need a whole another set of test styles to test that? Yeah, I make a bunch of test styles at a time. What do you think this is, my first day or something? Okay, so I glazed most of these off camera because I assume that most of you guys don't want to see me just glaze all day long. This bowl and this cup are both Ron Roy's High Gloss Black with the original copper recipe on the inside of them. Only because I think either green and black or red and black would look really well together just in case they come out nice. 
Plus, there's a little bit of overlap, and I'm really interested to see how that overlap is gonna react with the new glaze recipe. This cup right here and this bowl right here are both also the original glaze recipe. The only difference is there's Lumos on the bottom of this, and then the original glaze recipe with the copper in it is on the very top. As for this, is my floating blue recipe first, and then it has that copper recipe on the very top of it. So these two are a little bit separated as far as the glaze recipe goes, but these two specifically, I wanna see how they react together in the kiln. As for this entire line right here, is the secondary glaze recipe with the red iron oxide and the mason stain yellow inside of it. So this one right here is just the bowl by itself. There's no extra additives into it. This is specifically the glaze by itself. I really wanna see how it acts by itself on a smooth surface like a bowl. This one here is the same exact thing, except for this one has a little bit of texture. I want to see how it breaks on the bottom of some texture, or whenever it goes over some grooves like this. So this one's kind of more of a texture tester. This one is the secondary recipe with Lumos on the outside of it, and it overlaps a little bit on the inside. I just really want to see, especially what my super really runny Lumos does to it, because Lumos is a great additive. Lumos is something that changes all of my glazes whenever I put them with another glaze. And then of course, we have our redstone, bee mixed with grog and porcelain textiles for the very first test. We have our redstone, bee mixed with grog and porcelain textiles for the secondary glaze recipe test. Because I assume you guys don't want to see me load the entire kiln, we're just gonna fast forward time a little bit. What? It's almost like I did all of this work, glazed a high majority of these off camera, and then fast forwarded time for your results just for your convenience. You better click that like button. I slaved over a hot kiln all day long for you while you were at work. I slaved over it, and now you won't even eat it? How dare you? I'm a good husband. I'm actually extremely happy with these results, but I think you guys kind of know how I roll by now. So first, we're gonna take a look at the actual test styles and talk about what we like about them. Then we'll probably go with this, and then we're gonna come over here. But I do have to move the camera away from these things because I realize that you guys won't even look at the test styles if I stay put over there. Firstly, let's take a look at the redstone test style. The thing that I'm really noticing about this is that it turned majoritively blue, and you can kind of see a little bit of red right there in the texture line but it, it doesn't exactly look green at all. I'm heavily assuming it's because of what the clay is made out of and the chemicals inside of the clay and how it's mixing together with the glaze. But this isn't too bad. This is actually a fairly nice blue. I will admit I like glazes like this because if I'm gonna use it only for one clay, then it essentially breaks down all my usability for brown clay. But this way I know that, hey, this is viable for brown and white clay, B-mix and porcelain as well as redstone clay. So I'm actually fairly happy that it came out, not green, but it still came out a pleasing color. And if you look on the side, you can notice that silicone carbide drip, and you can really see where the red almost tried to come in. You can really see it on the side right there. Let's take a look at the B-Mix test aisle now. Now this is a very interesting test aisle to me because this is more of what I was looking for. I was kind of looking for this whitish red because I realized there's not too much copper in this. Next time I make it, I might even ease off on the copper. I like this a lot better on white clay and still that, that silicone carbide red spot that they was trying to get on the last test aisle, look at it, it came in way more dark red right there. You can see where it's either thick or where it breaks or where it's thin, it does a really good job at being red, but you can see the normal part, like the medium glaze right there, didn't do too well. I'm actually pretty happy with the way it's looking on being mixed with grog clay right now. It doesn't look too bad. Again, I'm noticing a little bit of pitting, but then again, this silicone carbide chemical is made to use lava glazes and textured glazes, so I, I completely understand why it would do that. One of the main usage of it is to make lava glazes that look a little bit like this. So I completely understand why this is pitting a tiny bit. I'll probably have to fix that later on if it keeps happening. But I think my fix to it initially, in my mind at least, is to just make it thinner. Ho ho porcelain. What's up girl? This is what I'm excited about right here. This is John's copper red at cone 6 oxidation on a porcelain textile. Look at that. Look how good it looks. It's a thin, I'll admit, it's a fairly thin textile. But man, that's that's some good red. This doesn't even look green. I understand it's a tiny tinge of green, but this looks a lot more like white and red. I, I mean, I like this a lot. 
If I had a glaze like this, wait, I mean, wait, I mean, I, I guess now I do have a glaze like this. It's really hard to get reds in oxidation, and this is pretty close. But this is the kind of glaze I like, especially on the inside of the texture. It turned a lot more red, which tells me it responds fairly well to the texture. It'll probably turn this type of dark, deep, rich red on the inside of a lot of texture or on the inside of a lot of my bowls. Okay, let's take a look at the second glaze recipe. I'm gonna take pictures of these ones later. Let's take a look at the brown test style first. I like this green a lot on the redstone test style, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's kind of a basic green. It just looks super normal to me. I really think I put this glaze on too thick because I'm seeing one or two pits every test style, and I'm seeing some over here on the other products as well, which kind of tells me I either have it on too thick, but when I check the notes inside the glaze recipe book, and on John Britt's Instagram, he says do two very quick dips if you're looking for the best results. And I think I just I just did it way too long. I don't think there's anything wrong with this glaze recipe. I think it's mostly user error, to be honest with you. Give me that B-Mix. The texture on the B-Mix actually isn't too bad. I feel like the best shot that we're getting on these test dials is from the side because you can really see the amount of texture and difference that it gives each and every clay body. I will say that I like the last test dial a little bit more than this one but it's personal preference. If you like this type of neon green color, then yeah, this is, this is right up your alley. But if I'm being honest with you, if I'm being really honest with you, you might, this looks like baby poo to me. To be honest, this just doesn't look appeasing to me no matter what you do. I think it's just more of a personal preference with me, kind of like how I don't like yellows. This is too close to yellow for me to be an actual glaze color that I like. Let's check out this porcelain one. I'll admit the porcelain one looks a little bit better, but again, I can still see that tinge of green Kind of baby poo. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I keep saying baby poo, but that's what it looks like. I think if I remade this recipe, I'll probably just make the original glaze recipe. I'm most likely not going to make this yellow mason stain and red iron oxide version of it. I might do another test later where it's just red iron oxide to see if I can enhance the amount of red in the recipe, but I really don't think I need it. Let's check out the baby poo side first. Now keep in mind, this recipe is the second day recipe. This is not the true John Britt's copper oxidation red. This is kind of just a tester I found on his Instagram where the recipe called for a little bit of yellow mason stain and some red on oxide, except for I didn't want to make two separate glazes, so I just added those in. You can really see where the red tried to take into its own, and it doesn't run, actually, it, it doesn't run too much at all. It didn't, when I was making the recipe, I didn't think that it would run. It's not like it's pure naphthalene cyanide or anything, but it looks really good, I'm not gonna lie. This glaze is a really good looking glaze, except for the fact that it's baby poo. The glaze itself is fine. The way the glaze is made up, the base of the glaze is fantastic. And on the inside, you could really see where it tried to turn true red. You can really tell that, man, it was it was trying. It was trying super hard to become red, but in the end, these little yellow spots, I'm gonna stop saying baby poo, but every time I say yellow spots, you know exactly what I mean. I'm just, I'm just really not into the base of this. Like this yellow, this Ninja Turtle snot yellow, I'm good, I'm, I, I don't like it. This, if you can remember, is just the original glaze by itself with those additives of red iron oxide and the yellow mason stain inside of it. There's nothing special about this. This doesn't have any layering or anything. It doesn't have any extra glazes. This is the glaze all by itself. I'm gonna keep this just because I know there's some patrons of mine that would love this. That's the only reason I'm keeping it. I don't actually see anything wrong with the bowl other than its color, and I'm just not fond of the color, but that's a personal choice. I know there's some people that would love this. This cup here is the same exact recipe. There's nothing extra on this. There's not Lumos or anything extra. This is just the glaze all by itself. And you know what? It came out really nice, just like that bowl over there. It's really nice to have two testers because it verifies what I thought about the first one. Like if this one came out blue and that one came out baby poo yellow, then we'd have an issue. Then then it's user error or it's chemical error. It's something that I put next to it in the kiln. Uh, it's, it's something's wrong with either me or the glaze. But the fact that I have two of them coming out the same exact way tells me that this is consistently how it's probably going to come out. And that's a good thing. This glaze is fairly consistent. The reason I tested it on this cup right here is specifically because I wanted to see how it acted inside of texture, inside of little grooves that I made inside the cup. And you can really see where it started to turn red, although I don't see much of it in these two lines here. So I don't think too much texture matters with this glaze. I will say wherever there is texture, it seems to be a little bit of red, but also there's a lot of red where there's not texture as well. So I don't think this is like a big, you must have texture for this glaze kind of moment. 
And I'm trying to get it inside the sunlight so you guys can really see it. But I don't think that this is this is really going to help it out. I see a little bit of pitting still, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit on the outside. There's not much on the inside. But I think I'm also going to give this to a patron if they want it. Oh, wow, look at that bottom. I didn't even look at the bottom. Dang, look at that. That's so nice. Too bad it's baby poo yellow or else I might actually like it. Now let's check out this little bowl right here. This on the inside is the secondary glaze. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that little spot is right there. I think one of my uh, my kiln pokers got stuck in there and just glazed it over, so I'm automatically gonna have to get rid of this. But still, it's an excellent test style in that this is Lumos over the secondary glaze that we made with the yellow mason stain. You can see when fused at the outside, it makes quite a good color, but it doesn't look like it tried to refuse the other color, it just looks like it overtook it. It's not like it went together to make a whole new glaze. And on the inside, it kind of looks the same. It kind of looks like the Lumos just took over this entire space right here. Because this, all around the inside rim right here, was this glaze. And Lumos was like, nope, I, I hate that. Nope, no, none of that, please. So I don't think these two glazes mix too well together. But this also is the tester glaze. This isn't the real glaze that we're actually testing. It's baby poo and I don't like it. This cup is the same thing as that bowl over there. The only difference is that I only put it on the outside. You can see again where the Lumos really, really tried to overcome this glaze, although it did, it did turn really nice. The only difference is in the middle, I put a lot of wax resist so that it wouldn't get in the way, but of course the Lumos is naturally a runny glaze. So it kind of just went straight over. I don't know if I'll keep this cup, um, I will say the inside is the original glaze that we were testing in the first place, the secondary one. What? He's putting it in the throwaway pile. Ooh, now we get to the good stuff. This is honestly what I've been waiting for. This is the original John's Brit Copper Oxidation Red recipe. On the outside, we have a very uniform Ron Royce high gloss black. It worked perfectly, just as intended. I only put the copper red on the inside, and man am I happy with it. Guess who's making a five gallon bucket of this glaze right after this episode? Who's got two thumbs and loves scented candles? Look at that, how can you hate that? I will admit it came out a lot more copper than it did the red. I really wish this red was a lot more uniform, but again, I put a very, very thick coat of this on the inside, which is why you probably see a tiny bit of pitting. I think if I made this a little bit thinner and mixed it a little bit better, it would come out a lot more uniform. But this is still amazing. This is this is still fantastic. I'm going to send this off to somebody. I still love this. This is probably the best tester that we've gotten out of the kiln as far as this glaze recipe. And you guys remember what I said earlier, when it happens one time, it's a mistake, especially underneath the same conditions. But when it happens two times underneath the same condition, it's a little bit more proven. Like if I was a scientist and I was doing a test and I put two glazes of the same type on both the same clay bodies in the same atmosphere underneath the same conditions and they came out the same way both times, well at that point I can pretty much say it's a sure bet that this is the way the glaze is gonna come out on these two clay bodies underneath the same conditions every single time. And that's what I'm really liking about this right here. This is half of the reason I always put a second tester. And it's kind of hard to see because the light's not really shining inside of the cup because the cup really doesn't have a big, big old bowl to bounce off of. But the natural sunlight from the studio over there is hitting a little bit of it and you can definitely see all that goodness on the inside. Look, there you go. That's real nice right there. These two are gonna be saved. If, if nobody wants them, as far as my patrons go, then I'm definitely going to keep them myself, especially this one. This one didn't have any pitting on the inside, but this one had a little bit of pitting. Um, I will say, technically speaking, I don't really go for that when I'm talking about food safe glazes. But then again, I've been eating off pit wear for like, like 10 years, and I've never gotten sick or died. Just wash your stuff out like a normal human being. Oh, what, I have to wash my dishes right after I'm done eating them? Like some type of peasant? Yeah, it's called being a responsible adult. This is the one I'm extra excited about. This is my Lumos recipe on the very bottom of this John Britt's copper red recipe. My Lumos seems to make every other glaze better when you put it on the bottom of it. I don't know what it is. The Lumos is such a great additive. I test it with almost every new glaze I have. But really, look on the inside. Look at that right there.
I was fairly sure this was going to run actually. It's one of the reasons why I put it on something with so many bumps and so many textures is that I was like, well, maybe these bumps and textures will stop it from running. But to be honest with you, my Lumos is fairly stable. Whenever you put it on something else, it makes it runny. But if you just have Lumos by itself, it's fairly stable. And when I glazed it, I only glazed, I just dipped it, I rimmed it like this, right? So technically speaking, I only put the glaze from here up and it ran all the way down. Luckily, it didn't drip. But I think separately, these glazes are fairly stable. The Lumos is stable and this is stable. Together though, it ran pretty good. I'm actually fairly happy with this glaze right here. I'm extremely happy with it. This, I don't see anything wrong with this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this. Now this is the last one in the entire test. This is my floating blue with John's copper oxidation red on top of it. I'm not gonna lie, I rimmed this one too. I took it and I rimmed it and then I didn't know what to do with it and it was dripping everywhere and then I was like, oh no! And so I decided to get a brush and just brush a few layers on the very top of the slip right here. And you know what? It works fine as a brushing glaze too. Again, I put it a little too thick, which I think is what's causing these little tiny pits right here. I'll be far more careful in the future. I think that's purely user error. If I was to make a five gallon bucket of this and dip it real quick and take it right back out, I don't think a lot of this pitting would happen because it's not happening on the spaces where it's thin, it's only happening on the spaces where it's extremely thick or I brushed it on very thick. So I think that's honestly just my fault. I will say though, with a lot of these other test styles, there's a lot more greenish blue than I expected. I might tone down the amount of copper in here, but I also know that copper is the thing that makes this red. So I'm kind of on the fence about it. Like I, I kind of like that last test style that we had on the very first one on the porcelain where it was kind of like whitish red. You know what I mean? This one's kind of whitish red and then this one's kind of greenish red. I like this one a lot more. I understand this is porcelain and this is not. Although I'm, I would like this a lot more. This looks a lot better and more congruent to me. Let's go over the final rating of this glaze. This glaze dries fairly fast. It's not like you have to dip it and hold your hand here in the tongs forever and ever. So I give that a good rating. Trust me, it's not really a problem until one day you get a glaze that needs to be double layered to work and you sit there getting arthritis inside your hands for all of two minutes while you're just clamped down really hard. How fast it dries is massively important. The color, I'm gonna give bonus points because, I mean, think about it. How often do you really get to create reds like this in an oxidation kiln? Most people don't even know you can do this, let alone the fact that I'm showing you the proof that it's possible right now. So this one chemical, the silicone carbide, really makes copper possible to turn red inside of an oxidation kiln. It mixes fairly well with other colors, but I will say anything you put over it it's essentially going to take it over. It's, it doesn't like to play well with others. It doesn't mess up the glaze, but it does like to dominate other glazes. So this is partially a positive and a negative. It might just be this floating blue though, to be honest with you, it might just be that this floating blue is weak in comparison to the other glazes that I have. But I will say even on this Lumos, which is one of my strongest ad glazes, the, the glaze that I really add on to make texture and whatnot, you can see it, it took it over as well. So I'm not gonna give this a complete positive, I'll give this a positive and negative. But this is a really strong glaze. Some people like their glazes to melt together, some people like them to work together and make new glazes. I myself prefer it to work with my glazes and make new glazes. This just overpowers them. So this is both a positive and a negative. Usually I rate whether you can reglaze with this or not, but it doesn't seem like I really need to use that. Plus it's so strong that I bet that if I reglaze something with this, it would work out just fine. I don't think it runs too much. I will say that it doesn't combine with other glazes too well. It just kind of takes them over. So because of that, although I haven't done extensive testing on how much it can run, depending on how much gravity and water you put inside of it, I'm gonna give this a positive because I put it just regular on something and it didn't seem to run too much. I mean, the same base as this is the same base as this with extra stuff inside of it. And this is just a very, very thick version of this glaze with basically yellow mason stain and some red iron oxide inside of it. And it didn't run whatsoever. I put an extra thick layer of it right here and it did not run whatsoever. I didn't even take extra care of this foot. Look, I just took a sponge and wiped it off and called it a day. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is not a runny glaze. And again, the same exact thing happened here. I just wiped it off a little bit. It didn't run too much. Granted, if you saw the way I glazed these, I put an extremely thick layer of this glaze on these two items. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite certain that this is not a super runny glaze by itself. 
it also seems to do fairly well on texture and it pulls very nicely I mean I mean look this is like the best one I've gotten and this entire thing was filled I pretty much poured all the glaze in here and just rolled it around a little bit for a good five seconds so this is an extremely thick version of it and look Look how much it pulled, and look how beautiful it is from the pulling. Look how nicely it pulls, look at that. This pulls so nicely and works so well on other textures. The one thing I really want you guys to remember is my kiln is extremely old, it's a manual kiln, I don't do cycles, I don't do ramp up and cool down cycles, and I don't do holds. These glazes are working essentially underneath the worst conditions you can with the oldest kiln you can have. I have a SCUT 181 manual. I literally put the sitter in there, I fire it up, it goes all the way up, it stops at a certain temperature, cone 6, and then it goes all the way down. My point being, the glazes I'm giving you are working underneath the worst conditions. They don't need holds, they don't need ramp up and ramp down times. They work if you just put it in, turn your kiln on high, and this is the result that I'm getting from that. Altogether, I give this glaze 9 kiln gods out of 10. And the only reason this is getting one extra point over Jeff Campana's gray that we tested last time is because, look, it turns red in oxidation. Alright, this is witchcraft as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my actual artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. We also have a Facebook fan page, and now we have a brand new Discord that you guys can join. There's plenty of Dirty Potters down there that would always love to be of help. There's plenty of rooms where plenty of people will give you some great advice. I also might have coded a robot in my Discord that if you put certain commands in, it gives you all the recipes to the glazes I've ever tested. I really hope this video will help you guys out to see if you actually want to test and make this glaze inside of your own oxidation with your own clays. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Not my baby. My baby doesn't have color poo like that. Well then something's wrong with your baby and you should take it to the doctor.